Greetings, welcome back, Papaya. Let's continue our journey towards the next liberation right. Good morning, everyone. We are at the mercy of the stars, and none can say how soon they will shine for us again. Let us recover for a while at moonlight alcove and decide how to proceed. Best make yourselves as comfortable as possible here for the time night wins. The rides ought to commence again before we know it. Until then, be well. Thus, you and your companions remain on the mountaintop, waiting for the stars to shine again. The cycle of the rides is ending. The news that Wolfred and the Lone Minstrel revealed to you now threatens to disrupt the group's resolve. Who most deserves their freedom? Can there be any hope for your revolutionary plan to change the Commonwealth if too few exiles manage to return? These questions hang like a fog over you and your companions as you linger there at Mount Alodia. For now, the exiles of the Nightwings vow to stick together for as many opportunities as they shall have. Many moons pass. One cold evening, Wolfred finds you off on your own. Well, my girl, it's time once more. Come see. Wolfred indicates the sky as through the snow, and through the snow, you see that he is right. Soon, all of your companions are gathered. Wolfred regards the group in his steady manner. As you all know, I have refrained from participating in the rites myself. This was a long-held choice of mine and a variety of reasons. Chief among those reasons is so that I might direct our plan free from unwanted attention, both from our adversaries here and those who would oppose us in the Commonwealth. Another reason is my past experience conducting the rites. It did not end on good terms. Before my time, the Nightwings comprised three exiles, Brighton, Erisa, and Oralek. Little Tizo was with them as well, still learning in their ways. After Brighton regained his freedom in the Liberation Rites, the Nightwings took me in. A story for another time, but for one thing, I have comp capacity to read the ancient book. Anyway, when next we earned our way into the Liberation Ride, Oralek was anointed for return. He had long been in exile, and his horns were beginning to show. We prevailed. Little Tiso snuffed the accuser's spire, thus Oralek earned his freedom. However, just as the Shimmer Pool was to engulf him, Erisa, she, she shoved him from the precipice and took her freedom in his stead. She perished, of course. Only the anointed can transcend the Shimmer Pool, but she thought the warnings were a myth and paid the price. She was always restless. I presume Oralek perished too. To survive a fall from Mount Alodio, I was left alone. Subsequently, I made no attempts to resemble the Nightwings, knowing that such treachery, such harm was impossible as, par as part of this ordeal. I, frankly, still do not hold Erisa entirely at fault for what transpired. I hold instead the Commonwealth responsible for it put us in this desperate situation. And I resist the urge to think the rights may partly be to blame as well for pitting brother against brother, sister against sister. Wolfred breaths a deep sigh. Now I see that Oralek yet lives at a time when our plan is already in motion. And even the stars are fading. 
Perhaps a symbol that describes themselves know that the night wings are divided and that they do not approve. But I choose to take it as a sign that we must act. The scribes have put us in a set of circumstances where each one of us may rise to the occasion. The night wings and our plan need all the help that they can get and so I have made a decision which I wish to announce here to you all. In the name of Nightwings and reader by your leave, I would conduct the rites again. Long have my skills languished in the matter, I admit, although I trust I shall regain them soon enough. While I almost vowed never to conduct the rites again, our present situation calls for all our resources to be brought to bear. So, if I may be of use during the rites to come, I shall avail myself. That's all. Now then, our reader shall determine where we are headed come first light. Wolfen bows his head to everyone, while the others exchange looks, then one by one salute him in turn. Wolfen stands ready to conduct the rites again. Once more do several stars shine bright in the night sky, revealing several paths for you to pursue towards salvation. The stars themselves await the will of the night winds. Very well then, reader, once more you shall face darker than the fate than I, when the next stars align. We may say set cross for the crane of hope at dawn. And now please get some rest in the remaining dark of night. Afterward, as an exile of the downside, as reader of this book, and as conductor of the rites, you are engaged now in a cycle which has lasted since the dawn of this age. Here, within this part of the book, is offered summary of all key figures, locales, terms and astral phenomena you shall encounter either first hand or in passing on your path. To know the history of the downside and the rights is to prepare yourself to walk the path toward enlightenment and then to liberty itself. Should you be free again, remember, reveal not the rights themselves, nor the existence of this book. Rights terms. Adversary. The opposing band of exile system against during the right. Aura, one solitary weapon in the rights, one's inner strength made manifest. Banishment, a fleeting sense of nothingness induced by contact with an opposing aura. Book, this very tome or any of the precious copies which we together crafted. Casting, the art of projecting one's aura toward the adversary. Enlightenment, Understanding gained after conducting a right. Explosion, a state of eternal banishment. Rights terms continue. Rights, a celestial cycle through which the worthy can regain their freedom. Raiments, flame proof masks and ropes fashioned for the rights. Rank, a measure of the rights conductor's experience in such matters. Reader, one who can decipher text or oversee a triumvirate in the rites. Right, a ceremony through which worthy exiles may regain their freedom. Stamina, a measure of an exile's physical exertion it gradually recovers. Sigil, a symbol representing each triumvirate set where the pyre shall burn. 
eight scribes. Golgoratian, known as the Master General and the Nomad Scribe, he wields the legendary Tower of Shield Oath Taker. Hope the Swole, known as the Accuser, and the Imp Scribe, he possesses the legendary Wings of Misfortune. Jomurem Menmain, known the Alpha Sheaf and the Cruel Scribe, he wields the legendary Jawblade, Neil Bender. Blue's Clorian, known as Hundred Minds and the Subscribe, he wields the legendary staff, the genealogy of Sclorian. Triumvirate, the Accusers, Triumvirate formed by the nomad Golgoliathian, founded on justice and loyalty, Sigil, Shattered Scale, the Beyonders, Eternally Expelled, Not a True Triumvirate, Sigil, Fogged Star, the Chastity, Triumvirate formed by the Sap, Luz Clorian, founded on integrity and modesty, Sigil, Bloom Flower, the Dissidents, Triumvirate formed by the Imp, Help the Swallow, founded on difference and conviction, Sigil, Lyric More, the Essence, Triumvirate formed by the Harp, Saint Triestatis, founded on liberty and piety, Sigil, Empress Tear. Daisons of Sar, of course, swift, dog like creatures known for their loyalty, optimism, and appreciation for the simple things. Most heavy set serpentine creatures known for the bluntness, stubbornness, and penchant for mysticism. Demons, former men and women who have withstood exile in the downside long enough to be transformed by it. Empire of Sar, the a nation which thrived for an entire age. Now it is on the brink of ruin as we remain imprisoned here. Perhaps winged creatures from whom men and women are perhaps descended. Mm. High Windy, a Malaysian faction of harps that has resisted the Empire's generosity with vicious force. Imps, ravenous creatures indigenous to the downside, and possess a higher intellect. Nomads, men and women who venture to the downside from the Empire. Saps, clever tree like creatures known for their ingenuity and ambition. Sea Dominion, the vast and war torn undersea nation of the Under King. Sister of the Arch, heroes trained from birth to carry out their mission. Worms, intelligent amphibians of the Sea Dominion, known for their trivial and determination. Downside regions, Black Basin, a land of black glass, searing upon vapor and strong forests. Single largest region in the downside, Deathless Tempest, a storm which particularly rages in the Sea of Solace. Exiles of the Sea Dominion claim responsibility. Downsun Prayer, one of the downside's only verdant regions, although tempest swept and overall unavailable. Lying Hands, a gloom filled, generally foul and desolate region of the downside beyond which lies the sea. Jomuir Valley, a sprawling, sun swept, fossil wasteland toward the south. Mount Alodiel, the sacred mountain on whose summit the rites were first ordained. Sea of Solace, an impossible ocean expanse pockmarked by crude little islets. Korean Shore, a frozen oasis stuck beneath the chaos of waking wood and the sacred Mount Alodia. Southern Sun Holds, the southern edge of the downside, an unlivable waste. Worm Gulf, the tempestuous Sea of Solace lies beyond this stagnating body of water.
I do so hate to thusly contact you, O oh reader. Yet an awful rumor reached me recently. That you have within your retinue a traitor. To the Nightwings and the Commonwealth alike. But you would never harbor such a traitor, now would you? I trust your time within the downside would have taught you that. We rise after a fistful night of slumber. Somehow, the voice which thus far has reached you only in the right has found its way into your sleep as well. You shake free of it. The time at moonlight alcohols has made everyone restless. The group is eager to set forth at your command. Your flight takes you near to where you bridge past the storm wall into deathless tempest. With the climate in the downside intensifying, you wonder if the storm has spiraled forth from, the, from its confines and started to ravage over regions of the land. There. Wilfred mm. appears to have finished sealing some sort of document. He smiles as he approaches you. Hello, my girl. I was just on my way out to make a drop. Report a bit of progress our supporters on the other side should like to know. It is not clear to you as yet exactly how Wilfred is able to communicate with agents in the Commonwealth. We have our ways of making certain that such messages manage to make their way to whom they need to reach, most of the time at least. It's not exactly the most dif dif dignified of methods, but the messenger imps is as hard working as the rest of us, or dare I say, more so. Most imps lack the capacity to do that job. They of course cannot traverse the outer boundaries of the downside, but they can squeeze much closer than any of us. Wolfred offers to tell you more of, his pro of this process. It seems that he has been using certain imps to relay messages to his agents in the Commonwealth for some time now. On that point, we depend on certain other means. A trafficker like Rookie would likely be familiar with them. Then my agents intercept the messages as they arrive. The messages are coded. In the off chance, they reveal themselves before unwanted eyes. But even still, my agents put themselves in great peril there, supporting our cause and our plan. I could not ask for more, a more dedicated bunch. A shame we cannot meet them, separated as we are. If we succeed in our endeavors, it shall be thanks in no small part to them. They have identified hundreds of citizens grown and loyal to our cause, found hidden corners where they can speak freely. Their goal is to grow in numbers while remaining safe. For we cannot resist the Commonwealth if too few citizens stand again with us. Whether due to apathy or fear, or lack of willingness to see our nation as we do. Some of these agents I have known for many, many years, since long before my exile. Many have were former students from my days of teaching Commonwealth doctrine. It was clear then, who among us did not take the common view. These days I report to them our progress, and they, in turn, report theirs back. 
From that assessment, I applied the estimation of a plan's success. Our chances of success increase substantially each time we liberate one of our known. But those loyal to us in the Commonwealth slowly gather strength, regardless knowing of our effort. Thus, do we inspire each other, not unlike the dynamics which I see among the Nightwings, hey? Now, good afternoon then, reader. I have a delivery to make. He strides out the way can bring the sealed message. As you walk through a dark corner of weak sand, you sense a presence of some sort which reaches to you, out to you. It presents to you a vision of the adversary you expect to face in the coming ride. The apparition is aware of your next adversary in the ride's bird. It offers to sway the coming right against him in your favor. Accept and your adversary shall suffer a misfortune that inhibits his performance. Nothing permanent in claims. The client and the person shall extend its offer to Dalbert instead. You thank the apparition for its generous offer and accept what is proposed. A moment later, the apparition falls in on itself and disappears as you head back to the black wagon. You cannot help but wonder what exactly it intends to do. The wagon comes to us and stop after a near miss with someone or something that could wait in its path. At first, you, felt you see no sign of whomever or whatever it was, but then a voice rings out from off to the side of the path. The friendly yet somehow aggravating tone leaves the room for question at who it was. Is. Hey guys, um. So maybe watch where you're going a bit more next time, I guess. You best not scare that half to death. I just look at him. But it's good to run into you like this because I got for you a really special <laughs> We got some pretty out there stuff on hand and it's been slowing us a bit to be completely honest here. Something about him, I don't know, but that just hasn't been himself. That wants to open shop? Why? These numbers, they're gonna go flying off the shelves. And you can have trust dips. All you gotta do is give us a lift, cause you're headed to the cane of help, right? Just drop us off when you get there, okay? Black Wagon does not provide for you the most spacious accommodations. But it might have room enough for Falcon 1, really, at least for the short remainder of the trip. On the other hand, he uses a troubling energy from whatever strange artifacts he is transported right now and whether, whether you should get involved. Though your fellow exiles exchange cautious looks, you invite Falcon 1 to glide the boat. Oh great, thanks guys, I'll just uh, squeeze right in, just... He does not. Dad, come on, put your back into it already. Eventually, Falcon 1 manages to get, get on board as you prepare to set forth again. Falcon 1, don't you? After what felt like an interminable trip during which Falcon only did not even once cease to speak of matters relevant only to him to reach your destinations. Anyways, thanks guys, and remember what I said. His fingers I got here, you got tips on him. If you come visit me and that, that is, now we'll be going, so be seeing you, okay? Whether from Falcon's ceaseless arrival, or the ill effects of his cargo, everyone is left feeling out of sorts. Oh, 
Hey guys, thanks again for helping me and dad back there who really owe you one. And so, as promised, I got something really, really good in stock for you right here. It poses full dramatic effect, then first to use several artifacts. Okay. They emanate with energy that can possibly be completely healthy. Nice, eh, right, you guys? You got four bits on these bad boys, and I can tell you what, they're going to go fast. Come to us again, guys! Once more, you have returned to the crying of hope, and your companion stands ready beneath a night sky, awaiting the commencement of the rites. You overhear some of their words to one another as you await the signal in the stars. So, you got to deal with the fate this time, eh? Let's live up to Nightwing's reputation then. Just then you observe a glint of starlight that begins to shine above, and your companions soon fall silent. Should I say deceiver? For I detect another exile in your ranks. The exile Volfred Sandalwood himself, that cursed sap. I ought have known he was behind all this. He has no love for our sacred tradition. Yet you would heed his poisoned words over mine own? I thought that we were friends. Then fine. Let us return to a more formal distance. The adversaries whom you were to confront when instead you had you run in with Oralek sorry have assembled at the opposite side of the clearing and the barren burn bright. Dalbert emerges from the ranks of the fate and calls out to the rest of you. Greetings, on Nightwings. When last we should have stood against each other, we had little choice but to deny the calling of the stars and were very mournful. The scribes expected more from us. Poor Almer, he remains very upset about it all. Please, do forgive our tardiness. Your Nightwings had nothing to do with the, what happened then. I sincerely hope my father's faith in this is not misplaced. The fates seem all the more determined to prevail against you, for you now. After all, like the night, there's chance to stand against you last time. Reader, my girl, let us confer a moment here. I am returned now to the rites, a tradition that I had once disavowed, and now that I've done the raiments, the voice knows I'm here. It is no matter, really. Our plan is well in motion. All that remains for us is to prevail. I shall aid you and the others in this task as best as I can. Let us see now whether these old limbs of mine are still 
of any use. And there he is at last, alive and well. I know that you can hear me, Sandalwood. You're causing quite a stir out in the Commonwealth. You plant your little seeds of discontent. Know that your designs and sowing chaos shall not be tolerated here. Now, good evening to you. Now then, Nightwings, I look forward to conducting you with you all, if and when, of course, the reader calls for us to stand as a triumvirate together. Who shall it be this time? Tizo is fired up and ready to take on the fight. Let us stand together now, my son. Always, father, I am ready. Now begin. Was the first banishment. Already does your adversary's flame begin to flicker. Onward thus to greater glory. Dalbert dispatched with ease. Bertrude plunged into the adversary's fire. Impressively conducted to this boy all night means. Yet well as by your burns, he still shall strive. Adversaries fare a little better. The right is complete. It seems that it was not to be our knight Omer, yet praise to be described for granting as the opportunity at all. The eight scribes bless us with their ways, and where once stood an imp. Now stands a master of the rites. A hidden power, a terrible, unbridled fury seems to have awakened within Tizo. Only no, he seems very enthusiastic about it. Swallow. That Wolfred always it was a little beast. slow to pick things up. It's been a while since my last outings in the rites, begging for your continued patience as I recollect the way.
is the wisdom of old hundred miles. Until the next right. Back at the Blake Wagon, you are taking some time to recover after besting the fate with ease when Wolfhard approaches. The night wings are in capable hands this day, my girl. Thank you for your continued effort, given all the challenges we face. The rides may be ending, but we still have time to achieve our plan, especially if you continue to prevail like that. Come, let's see whom we shall square against when next the stars align. The stars yet shine for you, revealing various paths to forward. You gaze into the darkness of night. So we soon shall square against Lendl the liar and the accusers. Him I know all too well, perhaps you notice that he doesn't like us very much. He then tells you what he knows of your next adversary, Lendl the liar, the first adversary you confronted in the rides. Not long after you took your first steps on the path to freedom. A former constable of the commonwealth, he gained a reputation for his strict and brutal manner, by any means he always caught the crook. Once uh, he arrested a civilian who hated him on suspicion of theft of commonwealth artifacts that had gone missing. Lendl discovered the artifacts himself in the civilian's home. The suspect soon was exiled, still he denied the charges, even as they cast him down river. The case was investigated further. Though too late, suspicion stirred to Lendo. It turned out he planned the damning evidence himself, so he was exiled in turn. In the downside, he soon became acquainted with the rights, having heard of all of this from several people in high places. He asserted himself as the de facto leader of the accusers. They bent to his aggressive nature and prevailed many times under his watch. Yet. Each time his chance of liberty arose, the Nightwings either defeated him or simply did not show up. He wished more than anything to outdo the Nightwings, perhaps even more so than to be free again. Let us give him another opportunity. For now, have a good night, my girl. You bit Wolf at a good evening. At dawn you shall take flight again. The Fate The Fate united under many men the Alpha Chief. He is brash, but follows his traditions. He prizes faith, discipline and honor, qualities he seemed to lack at first. He formed the Fate under the precepts of old bylaws of his four-legged ancestors. They believed in uncertain natural order in the way of things. Many men wanted for the Fate to likewise show respect. Initially, he only chose from other cars. He, however, urged the fate to replenish their numbers from any race or ethnic group thus willing. Not sure they anticipate what is to come with open eyes and minds and never thrown up upon what is in store for them. You are unaccustomed to seeing Bertrude smiling and yet there she is doing just that. You soon see why. You have observed before how her manner seems to soften to the degree it can whenever Wolfet is around. If only I could have seen their faces then. What was your secret there, I asked you, Bertrand? It appears that they are reminiscing about old times in the Commonwealth. Lane resistant things and the wood. It was the themselves which kept 
those volumes from morning birth to ash. Then I missed the ink. Of course, the good officers who came to visit, they were so intent on burning all the evidence, they did not stop to think the evidence was fireproof. Alas, that they later found a way to burn thy stamping first, regardless. Thy written words, they moved, moved us many times, and many others whom we knew there in the southern books. No matter, deeper truth, what's done is done, at least we made it difficult for them. Is that not so? Well, introducing some of our fellow citizens to new ideas. Mm, perhaps. My words would not have reached you half as many were it not for you. Not to mention how I managed to elude them for another decade or so. I am ever thankful for your sacrifice. Thy things shall not be necessary, Sandalud. Well, you shall have to take them from me anyhow. Thank you, Bertrude, for helping to fulfill our modest outdoors dreams. What goods are stamping press without good inks? No good at all. They, they exchange a lot at this, but then, even still, and through this new ordeal, thou has no love for us, is that so? Not so? Bertrude, nah, we understand full way. Thou needs not further explain thyself. There are different kinds of love, Bertrude. On that account, thou has nothing to do, just sandalwood. They each remain silent for a time. Our hearts, they cannot be controlled by truth. Blasted things they are, they act well on their own. He puts away his pipe. I am blessed to have you in my life, back in the commonwealth and here as well. I mean that, although I know that it is not enough. At first, first Bertrude does not seem to acknowledge this in any way, but then... Nay, hey, Sandalwood, it is enough. It is enough. She departs without awaiting a response, brushing past you as she goes. Wolfred soon turns away as well, politely bidding you a good evening. The two old friends have evi evidently managed their way past certain tensions in their long-standing relationship. They rather seem to draw a certain strength from one another. And that will be it for today. Thank you. Bye-bye.